welcome to this edition of the Ultimate Combat Experience, part three of three of the finals of round 16. Once again, we're here at Crush Video Studios because there was so much good footage, we had to muddle through it all to make uh, bring you three episodes of great fights. Well, Mike, we saved the best for last. This last show is just going to be knock down jag out. You're not going to want to leave your couch. You're going to want to stay tuned. Don't flip the commercials because I tell you, the main event, you're going to want to stick around and see Brandon the Murderer Melendez take on Glaz the Avena Disciple coming all the way from Las Vegas to actually uh, continue his undefeated reign inside the cage here, Mike. The Disciple is definitely the toughest kid we brought in here. And as you mentioned last week, he's the toughest guy that we've, that he's been dominating the Utah competition. But Brandon Melendez has said, I'm going to take this thing at you. It's the ultimate combat experience coming right at you. is his house. Harold Ocombio did that, Mike. He stepped in and said, this is my house. But Kelly English from Las Vegas, Nevada says, uh-uh. Didn't he fall uh -uh. out of a tree the last time he was supposed to come up here and fight? He was gonna fight Maniac and he fell out of a tree and hit his it, head. He did something, but I tell you, Mike, this kid looks the meanest of the bunch, honestly. No, I'm meanest. telling you right now, if there's a fighter that from Utah that's got his hands full tonight, it's Harold. based on what I saw in the weigh-ins last night, it's Harold. This kid's big, he's strong. Wow. This is gonna be Good a fight. real test of where he's come from. Middleweight, no old bar, check it out. Um, thank you very much. I've, I feel very proud. I feel very proud to be, be representing Utah. Um, and you guys are going to pay for it. You guys are going to see a great fight. I've been training really hard for it, and that's what's going to give me the edge. Why don't you give us an insight to maybe why? Why are you going to walk away the winner tomorrow? Oh, you know, I just train. You know, I'm here, for, like I said, I'm here for my family. I'm here for my God. I'm here to represent Team Mika. We are the best. And, you know, I just say good luck to my opponent, you know. Kill English, not much on words, Johnny Ritchie, but in very much in Las Vegas fashion, he's making a fashion statement here tonight. Fashion statement, Mike. What did you say you thought he looked like? The <laughs> the, the Habana, Habana cigar logo guy. Anyway. <laughs> with his glasses and his logo. Either that or yeah, Gill sure. Gilligan after he did a few years in the in the pen. <laughs> in the pen with his tattoos. Kelly English, 5'11", 185 pounds from Team Mika in Salt Lake, or in Las Vegas rather, calls himself the Impaler, John. I don't know, I'm not really sure what that means. Oh, the Impaler, maybe like Vlad the Impaler, like Dracula, maybe he's gonna stick you up on a pole after he a wins you. or something. Harold, the constrictor Lucavio needs no introduction in this show, but anyway. No. Uh, he's 5'8", 185 pounds, and uh, Johnny, this kid's gotten better. Well, Mike, he's gotten better consecutively week after week. You know, I was just going to mention the fact that when he started, he was an absolute fight novice. He'd seen it once or twice on TV, stepped in, started training with the right people, feels that he, you know, he's got what it takes to defend his state in this Border Wars competition. You, you know, Mike. it's funny you say that, Johnny, because he showed up to fight his first fight wearing those shorts, and everybody thought, this guy must really know jujitsu. Yeah. He must really be good. <laughs> and he had everybody scared to death to fight him, and he kind of buffaloed his way through it. I even thought he had a lot of experience. You know, he didn't look like he's, hey. looks like he's an athlete and all, and did pretty Good job. Mike, he brought a snake to the ring with him, and, you know, <laughs> he spoke with the accent, and people are thinking this kid's going to be the, you know, the jiu-jitsu king. But, and, uh, you know, he's worked his way to the point that he is now, but you saw a pretty good takedown by Kelly English right that there, That was Mike. a nice takedown, Johnny. I wear a snake to the ring with me every time I go in there, <laughs> but they don't, they're not intimidated by me for some uh, reason. Mike, right? no one is intimidated by that, not, not no, even my me. My garden snake? <laughs> no one's even, not me, not me. 
Very out down. Harold, you know you can't do that. Throw a little downward elbow there to the head. and um, Well, especially to the back of the head. They know that's a rule that you can't break, especially, you know, in a fight like this where a lot's on the line for Harold Ocumbio. You don't want to get disqualified for doing something stupid. No, absolutely not. Good point, Johnny. Yeah, very, very uh, slow action right here, but it's not that dull kind of action. These guys are really jockeying for position. And, and again, those that know a little bit about the fight game can see how these guys are really trying to get in a position to better themselves and look to uh, improve what they're doing right now. Well, small incremental victories Mike none of these guys are real explosive right now they are they're just kind of feeling each other out seeing what one's gonna do if one guy knows how to fight in the in the guard or maybe one guy knows how to fight from the guard they're gonna just kind of play back and forth to see what happens there you go and Dave Sully said said he's seen enough of this he's gonna get them back up on their feet you know uh, you mentioned Johnny Ritchie how they've just been trying to jockey a little bit there in small incremental victories uh, Dave Sully said there weren't enough of them we're gonna get them back up on their feet he back up on the feet and I don't know if if it's Kelly English is so overwhelming or if Harold's purposely fall into his back and point him in his guard, but that's twice now we've seen Kelly English uh, take Harold to the mat. That's right. Dave brought him to his feet, and Kelly said, right back to your backside, I'm going to put you. But I think it's a lot of it is is Harold's comfortable fighting out of his guard, and yeah. he didn't really seem to put up much of a fight on that last take. <laughs> no, he, he kind of just went right with it. But uh, well, one thing we know, definitely do know about Harold, Mike, is the fact that this kid is a conditioned fighter. He is in probably one of the best, probably the best shape out of any of the guys that step in here. We've seen him go six-minute rounds, and I don't know if it's because he's so maybe lackadaisical on his back and looking for the right moment or <laughs> what did you just say lackadaisical, lackadaisical. yeah 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 something you like know, that something like that right <laughs> close to a big close word to it. <laughs> you know I, I think you bring up a good point and I was going to ask you that uh, do you think that Harold is he appears like he's in such great shape because he hides out a little bit yeah. like this or is it because he's in such great shape well he assures us that he's working his butt off he works Ooh, out oh baby just right there, a full he gets, mount, gets a full mount and gets a full mount he was Me, a little too lackadaisical he's there. lackadaisical <laughs> no right there you see you, you, you know you, you might be in good shape it doesn't matter how good shape you you get full mount and get pounded on right here, Mike. Uh, boy, he needs to do something with this, though, Kelly English, that is. Yeah. He gets the most uh, superior position in this sport, and you got to do something once you get there. You can't just get it and hide out. And, and maybe he's thinking that he, he's got a lot of time left, but he's only got less than five seconds left here. Got full mount position, but did absolutely nothing did with it. Did absolutely nothing with it. You know, Harold did a good job. I think Harold knew where the clock was. I heard his corner screaming at him, Wilbur Nellis, telling him, where, telling him where the time was, so he just knew he had to hold on for 10 seconds. Well, we were going to hold on for a few more seconds. we got a couple commercials. We'll be right back. Catch the excitement of full contact, no holds barred action, live December 10th at the Delta Center. The ultimate combat experience, year end finals, Saturday, December 10th at the Delta Center. Welcome back to the Ultimate Combat Experience. If you're just joining us, you can see right here some of the action that went on in the first round between Harold the Constrictor Lucambio and Kelly the Impaler English. Kelly being out of Las Vegas, of course, John Ritchie, going up against the local boy, Harold Lucambio. And Harold Lucambio, Mike, uh, that first round, you know, he didn't really do a whole lot. I think Kelly English had the two big takedowns. He was a and bit le lackadaisical, wasn't he? Lackadaisical he was. He just kind of <laughs> laid around and really didn't do a whole lot. And Kelly uh, got two big takedowns. You know and what? Oh, Johnny right there. But Harold man. Saw that uh, hip throw coming again and said, nah, you're not going to get that on me three times. And oh, wow. Really did a nice job of defending that and landed in full mount. And now Kelly English is curling up in a little ball here trying to stop the onslaught. Well, he's trying to stop the onslaught. And you see Harold Lecombe and Mike looking for that arm bar, dropping just enough punches so that Kelly will free up that hand that he can uh, get that arm bar on and sink it in real tight. But Kelly's doing a good job, Mike. Uh, you well, know, uh, he's rolled back over. and, and or he, Well, actually, now he's giving him his back. Giving Maybe him not. his back. And I think Maybe Harold, Harold was uh, kind of feigning that arm lock, looking for uh, the arm lock, and then Kelly English gave him his back, so he kind of fell right into wow. to, uh, his plan here. Let's see if Harold Lucambio can do what he needs to do from this very superior position. Very superior position, Mike, but look at Kelly English. You know, Harold's got his hooks in. He's straightening his legs out all the way as hard as he can, and it's not even budging English. He's not flattened him out yet. Well, you want to talk about small incremental victories. Right here, English is doing what he can to keep Harold Lucambio's hips too high. If Harold's high like this, he can't get back and, and do any offensive damage. And, and Kelly English did a great job of making him stay up too high toward wow. now. Uh, he lost that position, wow. Johnny. Wow. Lost full mount, lost the back. Now he's back on his back. In it has Kelly English in his guard. Oh, my God, that's not something that's typical here at the Columbia. Usually he'll do something with that kind of position. Well, I, like I said, I think he was a little bit out of balance. He never really did get back. He got his hooks in, but he never got his hips back enough to try to go for a choke or anything else. Kelly English did a great job of defending. And, again, those are those really small things that sometimes you don't really notice in a fight. 
like this. Don't really notice in the value of that, Mike, but they do count. They do make up for something. Uh, Harold Lucambio now just maybe looking to get a break. Look at him. He's looking over at <laughs> his corner, saying two. I think he's, we got two minutes left on the clock. Is that sign by right? Or he was sign language for peace and love. I'm not really <laughs> sure what's going on. Oh, and, and it's Harold, Mike, so it very well could have been there. Very well could have been looking at some girls in the second row there. <laughs> Uh, I think he's married, isn't he? I, I don't think so. He might be. Who knows? If he is, he wasn't. But if he's not, he was. <laughs> okay, well, uh, looks right here again. Harold seems to be content to fight out of his garden. You know, this is a, a case where last round, Kelly English had a very superior position, did nothing with it. Harold Lucambio didn't quite get in his position to be able to do something when he had that superior position. But now he's back on his back and just kind of hiding out once again. Well, you know, and, and the people that have seen Harold Lucambio fight, they never accuse him of being a real exciting fighter. You know, they say that he's a little bit more boring and a guy that is just a technical fighter. And the, I think the Kelly English... Say he's exciting. He's exciting to watch. He's exciting. But just the girls say so. The girls say so. <laughs> oh, How about you? What do you think? Right there. Big punch. In fact, both men landed a pretty nice pair of punches there. But now we got Harold on top. Let's see if Harold can do anything out of the guard. But again, we're down to with uh, less than 10 seconds in this round, Johnny. These are hard rounds to hard score. Hard rounds to score. They it, because neither one of these guys are really stepping up and winning these rounds. Yeah. They're kind of doing just what it takes to not get beaten and and you can't win fights that way no you can't don't ever leave it up to a judge and especially in this fashion mike uh, uh, like i said i don't know we don't know all the judges are going to score it but it's i don't want to be one either way it's got to be tough well you see here in your crush combat cam where uh harold did get that takedown it wasn't necessarily so much a takedown as it was he thwarted kelly english's takedown and wound up in a nice superior position didn't do a whole lot of damage with it but johnny this is one of those fights where you've got two rounds in the books and neither one of them were decisively won by anybody no i, I think you're right mike but uh, Kelly English, like he was huffing and puffing a little bit over there, whereas Harold may be ready for round three and a little bit, a little bit more so than Kelly English. Well, you see the uh, the ten point must system though. Right now, you could be up by two points or down, down by, by two, two points, points, and you just don't know it. Ah. But you, somebody really needs to step up here in the third round and do something, do something just enough to win this fight. Well, Mike, we've seen the past two times that Harold's on his back. Not a lot gets done. You know, he jockeys for position. Looks like he's looking for some kind of a, a kimura key lock or, a key or, something, lock or right. something right there. Uh, but other than that, it's it, he's not really doing anything explosive to get off the bottom and, and win in the judges eyes. I mean Kelly English now has gotten what three takedowns even though that was a slip there they might call it a takedown. Johnny you really have to start looking at the fact that you know this Harold Lucambio has proclaimed this cage as his house and do you get the, the calls on the road yeah you yeah, know I know I in the know. NBA <laughs> that you very rarely get a referee's decision I, I think our judges here are very uh, non-biased they don't know any of these fighters whether they be no. local or from out of state so it should be very interesting to see how they judge this fight Either way, though, you can't complain about it. Neither man has anything to complain about because no. neither man has stepped up and decisively won any of the rounds, let alone the fight. I agree with you, Mike. I think with the, you know, with the minute 30 left or two minutes left, one of these guys is just going to have to step it up and either lay the leather or get a nice submission or, or, or just look busy Yeah. because these guys just look complacent. like They're just content to sit here and, and do not a whole lot of anything. Well, it looks like Dave Selly says he's going to step in here and give Good. one more shot Good. back up on their feet. And right here, really, this could be the deciding factor. This is it right here. Somebody's going to have to step in here and do something on your feet do something to take this fight away take this fight away and you see a kick right there up oh, and then, then maybe another takedown by <laughs> kelly english looks like harold's got his head uh, schools in there tight but that's not going to do anything to a guy that uh, trains with team mika mike you know johnny i just I, it's one of those fights that isn't really exciting no. unless you're you know one of the yeah. two participants <laughs> but you get these guys that are so evenly matched a and then b they're very knowledgeable both sure. these guys know what they're doing and no it just position. makes it difficult yeah. to to win or to make this kind of a fight exciting it's just like watching a game of chess you know i guess they're really not all that exciting, <laughs> no, not really all that exciting. A spectator sport well, like i said i'd hate to be a, a referee or i mean a judge at this point in time mike even a referee because for dave what do you do do you let these guys kind of roll around and hug each other or do you and look for submission or do you stand them up and see if we can end this thing the exciting way with the knockout well, you know you can't play to the crowd and you've got to give the guy who keeps taking this guy down an opportunity to do something he's got half mount you know he hasn't been really able to get all the way around and get full mount position as yet but you've got to give him a chance and an opportunity to do that wow. well you see Mika right there coaching him telling Kelly English you know hey you've only have 20 seconds left this is, you know maybe sit back drop a few punches and, and end this thing with a flurry so so the judges will give you the decision and, and, and Dave Selly said he is getting in there nice and close he wants to take a good look at it he's thinking about standing him up but gosh it seems they're just doing enough to keep him happy and sure. you know Johnny with five seconds left I think we've seen all the excitement we're going to see in this fight. I think so, Mike, and unfortunately, that's the way that it goes. Sometimes you get in here to see a knockdown drag out, and sometimes you see one of these where it is a chess match, and uh, Mike, I don't know. I think it could go either way at this point. It, no one really did anything, like you said, to win. 
of the fight, and it could have went either way. Uh, you know, yeah, maybe it goes to takedowns. If it does, then you got to give that to Kelly, Kelly English. English. Senior Crush Combat Cam, where you know Kelly English spent most of the fight on top of Harold Ocambio, yeah. and that will stick in a judge's mind whether yeah. you like it or not. Absolutely. You know, and, and he did do some damage. Now, he didn't do any uh, devastating punches, but he stayed busy and it looked like he was working for things. And you know, it's not like Harold did any more to stop him. Let's listen in on the judge's decision. Well, Johnny, you know, that's well, kind of what we talked about. Yeah. You can't complain either way. Once again, this fight could have gone either way. So, you know, the out-of-town boys came in here and did it. This post-fight interview brought to you by our good friends at Great Clips. Go to ultimatecombat.com for participating locations. What, what, what could you have done, you think, to win that fight, Harold? Well, first of all, I'm sorry, man. I'm going to take you off track a little bit. You're okay. You're okay. <laughs> um, like I said on the uh, weigh-ins, uh, I thank T um, Team Mika for bringing these guys. I really appreciate it. Without you guys, we wouldn't be here. Okay, let me say a couple of thanks. Thanks to uh, Team Pedro Sauer for preparation. Thanks to my corner, Will Bernales. Um, thank you also. I know they brought Master Shah here. Uh, oh, I appreciate yeah. it for coming here and also uh, all my co-workers uh, care source appreciate it and uh, Jim Jones, Mark Jim Jones. this post-fight interview sponsored by American Bush Utah's only 18 and over gentlemen's club located at 2630 South 300 West Kelly English you turned things around for Team Mika and the Vegas guys you came here to got to win how's it feel oh it feels great uh, my opponent's a little bit a little bit more than I expected him to be I was still better than him tonight, but I got to take my hat off to him. He's a tough guy. And anytime you send it to the judges, especially when you're on the road, you got to be a little nervous. You got the decision tonight. You think it was a good call? I think it was a good call. It turned out the way it should have. But uh, I would, first of all, like to thank the Lord Jesus for getting us all here and keeping us all safe those fourth in this tournament. I'd like to thank my beautiful wife, Cynthia Ann English. I love you. She's back at home for giving me the best inspiration in my life. My son, Samuel Kelly, my daughter, Stevie Josephine, Good job. and my other son, Maximus, Maximus Alexander English, my inspiration. And I'd like to thank very much, love and respect to Mika Amokar Sipley, my trainer, my instructor, to Team Mika Las Vegas, and thank you, Salt Lake City, Utah! All right, brother, great job, family man, great job, man. Are you here to Salt Lake City? <laughs> All right, man. He came in here and did his thing. He did. He came he in did. here. He did. And I hope it's not a, a sign of things to come because he did turn things around a little bit. We got more of the ultimate combat. Stick around. Oliver Bradstreet, you once again came in here. You didn't get to do it with your fist, but you came in here and you, and you walk away. You're a champ again, bro. I try. I do what All I right. can. Get out of here now. Good job. <laughs> The Maniacs coming out here, a light heavyweight that just knocks people out. Who's he fighting, Johnny? He's fighting Chris Lopez, coming all the way from Las Vegas, Nevada. This kid, Mike, he's calm, he's composed, he's slender, and he's supposed to be phenomenal at jiu-jitsu. So they say he's good at jiu-jitsu, but he wants to stand and train with the Maniacs. Yes. I cannot wait to see it, because it's going to be a bomb fest. A light heavyweight in the whole park, check it out. Benjamin, with that being said, tell us what's going to ensure your victory. Is the fact that you've trained so hard, or is it just because uh, you're coming back, off, uh, coming off a loss, and you want to get this thing? Uh, I'm not making no predictions. All I'm going to do is I'm going to fight hard. And uh, last time I started popping off my mouth, trying to play to the crowd, I got a, uh, you know, I got my my butt caught, and uh, you know things happen. But tomorrow night, it's going to be a good match. What's going to ensure your success tomorrow, uh, John? What, what's going to make you walk away the victor? Uh, I'm just going to go in there. Uh, uh, Try to bang and uh, do my best. Give, it, give, it, give, my, give it my best. Two fighters right here that are going to do their best. This is going to be one of the better fights of the night. Why don't you guys shake hands and best of luck to both of you guys. Well, Johnny Ritchie, it sounds like Benjamin Fuimano may have learned his lesson after last time. Said <laughs> so he was talking a little smack and he got caught with a shot. KCU Scola knocked him out, basically. Knocked I mean, out, yeah. TKO, and he's learned his lesson. He's come back against a kid that they say has really, really good ground, and he's got a little bit of a reach advantage on Benjamin Fuimano at six foot, 295 pounds out of Team Mika's group there in Las Vegas. We know what, Mike, I'm real excited to see Team Mika here, you know, in, in this thing, mixing it up, bringing his fighters here as many times as we need him to. And 
he brings some tough guys to give our Utah boys a, really a run for their money. Oh, the first time they came up, there, they just schooled us all. Dominated. And, and uh, kind of brought some fighters out of the woodwork. Uh, one of those guys that just didn't fare very, very well that first time they came up is Benjamin Fuimano. Walter Vital handed the Maniac his very first loss in NHB, and really it seemed to be a motivating factor for him because he got back in the gym and started training. He says he's ready for this one. He says, you're not going to uh, get me twice with a kid from Vegas, but boy, this kid's got some good stand-up. Nice leg kick <laughs> He there. does. Nice leg kick. It looks like he's been in this position a time or two. Uh, drops back and punches. But Benjamin Fuimano has two. Mike, what do you say? The best one-two in the business? Is that right? <laughs> best one-two in the business, but I'm looking at Mr. Lopez right here. He's got a little bit of a longer reach, and he's got some nice straight punches coming down the pipe as well, and uh, just brushed uh, uh, the maniac a couple of times here. And now in a clinch position, we'll see how they uh, fare here. Well, it looks like, you know, even Lopez maybe has a little bit of movie tire background. Dropped a couple leg kicks, looking for a couple knees, and and uh, looking pretty good, Mike. Not looking like a sloppy fighter that's getting in here and throwing wind he's wind got windmills. Muay Thai shorts on. Maybe that could be too. <laughs> hey, there you go. I think he's got a hey, little experience there he in is. the stand-up arts. But uh, we know him, or we were told that he's very proficient on the ground. He's like a brown belt in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. Well, but it seems to me like here that he's sporting the Muay Thai shorts. Obviously, he's got some stand-up experience as well. Some experience as well, Mike. And let me tell you something about Benjamin Fuimano. That's the thing that I think he fears the most is going to the ground with these guys. Going to the ground with these guys that have a lot of experience, that know about submission, that know about body position. That's one thing Ben will even tell you. He lacks that. He needs to get better at that. And I, I don't know. How, how's he gotten any better, Mike? Well, I guess we're going to find out here in a minute because I guarantee you this kid's getting – he's getting some uh, – trying to get his hooks in here. He's looking for a hip throw or something like that right oh, there. Right there. Coming Tried right it. Along, Tried it. Trying to throw uh, Benjamin Fomano. And, and, and Ben says he's practiced on the ground. But, you know, it takes a long time to get good at that. Sure, uh, but he's the one that initiates <laughs> well, the takedown. Ben just shoots underneath and takes his opponent down. Now, this is not somewhere you want to be in the guard of a very proficient uh, no. jiu-jitsu practitioner. Well, you see him crawling the body, Mike, and how do you stop those oh, long legs like that? Uh-oh, maybe a triangle coming up right here. Look like he's an got arm lock or arm something. Lock? And and, and and it looks like perhaps Mr. Lopez is a little bit. Oh, Larry, whoa, he just got caught with a couple, couple shots, shots. Big Johnny. shots, big shots. And, and shots like that for Ben. Behind, oh, but now he's got an arm. But no, he missed it. He stopped. Oh, Johnny, oh, wow. he just cracked him. I think his fight's over. Wow, Mike. I think Lopez is out, and he got caught with some really many shots. Ben little... doesn't know. He doesn't oh. know. He wants to keep going. Lottie oh, Foster wow. steps in and almost has L to fight Benjamin Fumano L off. Lopez wow. got rocked right there, Mike. Absolutely rocked. He got he got hit with a shot, a couple shots that just that he, he couldn't have recovered from. I don't he think there's no way. Him. You could tell when that one shot landed that his body contorted his wow. entire body. And uh, Ben Fumano is feeling good about that. As well, he should. He beat a ground fighter on the ground. On the ground. <laughs> In your crush combat cam, you, that's the first and probably the only time you'll see Ben Fumano take somebody oh. down without punching him first. Well, Mike, it was that shot right there. He oh, came right man, out of the yeah. arm bar with the strike, and, and it just rocked him. It bounces Kelly here, bounces his head, Lopez's head right off the mat. Right off the mat. His entire body went stiff, and then he, he lost the guard. He lost everything. And Lonnie Foster, seen that before, wisely steps in and stops things. Benjamin Fumano defends the home turf tonight. This post-fight interview is sponsored by Beehive Bell Bonds because sometimes bad things happen to good people. From your perspective, I, you know, I thought he was in dangerous waters. He was looking for a, a tough submission, and you just wasn't able to get it. He landed some big shots. Are you all right? Yeah, I'm fine. Yeah. All right, well, things didn't work out for you so well tonight. Will you come back up here to Salt Lake and give us the pleasure of, of you coming in and fighting for us again? Sure, no, not wrong. All right, man, you were good, just not good enough tonight. Thanks for coming out, man. This post-fight interview brought to you by the Old Salt City Jail. The best steakhouse in town. Benjamin, Benjamin, get over here, man. I was a little worried. He took you to a place we don't like to be. That was on the ground, but you, you look different, man. What happened? Uh, I just stayed calm, and uh, I wasn't really worried about going to the ground. I've been working on my ground game a lot over there with the guys at Elite. Shouts out to Elite, baby. And uh, still with Shone Pahua at UCTC. So everything came together just fine. I just had to wait it out. He tried to overwhelm me at first, but you know how Maniac does it. We got a lot of people that love you, Benjamin, and, I, and, and I'm one of the men. Congratulations, you did it tonight. You're the man. Thank you. Hey, I love everybody. Thanks for coming out. And uh, Utah, you know.
it. It's nice to see Maniac expanding his game. Yeah. He's, the, the result was the same. Got a knockout, but he did it on the ground. He did, Mike. You know, training in the Ultimate Combat Training Center, he trains with the baddest guys when it comes to their hands. And he's trying to mix it up over there with Elite. And, and it just goes to show that when you got two gyms that just train like Maniacs, you're going to produce a Maniac. All right, well, Maniac did his thing. Great job. We got with the Ultimate Combat. Stick around. Okay, I admit, there was another fight that I was a little nervous about tonight. Anytime you put somebody in front of Walter Vital, it's dangerous, brother. It is dangerous, but I tell you what, Brian Beebe is one of these guys, Mike, we haven't seen in a while. He used to fight for us all the time. He said he went back to the drawing board, he had to go back to basics. He's gonna restructure himself, and he says, I've got what it takes to be Walter, and I sure hope he does, I gotta Mike. tell you, Brian looks like the guy next door, man. He, he does. He looks like... Yes! I got a mic chant going over there. That's a All first. Right. That's a first. Light heavyweight, no holds bar. Check it out. What does it mean for you? We haven't seen you in a while, man. Where, where you been? I've been training hard. Getting excited to represent Utah. Um, it's great, great challenge opportunity for me. Walter Vital is a guy that nobody wants to fight, and I'm going to step up and test my skills against his. To test his skills against his, uh, Walter, I'm going to direct questions to you. What does it mean for you to be representing Team Mika? Represent, para mim está representando tudo e tem coisa melhor do que estar aqui do lado do meu professor e vim aqui para lutar de novo. Agradeço a eles todos aí. For me is everything. I'm happy to be here with Mika and represent him and also I thank all of you guys for let me come back. Well, we thank you for being here, Walter. What is going to ensure your success in tomorrow's competition? Vai representar o meu sucesso amanhã é acreditar em Deus, acreditar em mim e só isso, só Deus. Viu? My success tomorrow gonna depend on me believe in God and myself. All right, we heard right there. Both these guys, best luck to you. Shake hands, and this is gonna be a great fight tomorrow in this NHB competition. Boy, Johnny Walter Vital reminds Ooh. me of Ivan Drago. Oh, man. I yeah, must I, break you. I must break you. <laughs> but this guy, he, underneath all that, Mike, even though you got to get used to translator, he's a nice guy. Super, Super nice, nice guy, guy. Johnny. And unless Mick is just lying, everything that comes out of this kid's mouth is really nice, respectful. Tactful. But look at those steely eyes, wow. man. He can look right through you. 5'11", 195 pounds. The kid is like a fire plug, just, just a little compact, Freak. strong. And once he gets a hold of you, man, he's got a hold of you. Well, the Wolverine is right, Mike, and that's actually the guy that laid Benjamin Fuimono's first loss. Ben lost to him in the very first uh, fight that he ever, and so that just showed you that that Walter Vitale, he's a tough guy. Threw an arm lock on the maniac. Well, Brian Beebe, six foot, 295 pounds. Now he's got the big height advantage, and they sure. call him the BB gun. The BB gun. Man, man we, this kid. Where do we got that nickname? Oh, big, I know, where do you get that nickname? <laughs> the know. BB gun. But uh, he trains up there with uh, with uh, the Ogden Fighting Alliance. He says he's, gee, he had to go back to the drawing board. He's got to get back to basics. He's had a couple losses, but he's had a few wins. And he just wants to come out of here and fight Walter uh, and just give him a good fight. No, admittedly, he says Walter's a guy that, that people didn't want to fight. And that's what made me want to fight him. You know, that he's he's a, a black belt in Brazilian jiu-jitsu. You know, let me step up to the challenge. Let me come in here and see what I can do against this kid. And what do you know right there? Walter just tries to get him right to the map. Oh, oh baby. A big knee <laughs> by Brian Beebe. He's not holding anything back against this guy. Johnny, he caught Walter with a big knee and a big uppercut right there. Wow. I think Walter's saying, who the hell is this guy? Yeah, who did he come from? Yeah, who is Brian Beebe? Well, there you go. Brian Beebe right there. That's a big shot, a big knee. Uh, uh, he doesn't want to go down with this guy. Maybe maybe, yeah. maybe that's what did him. Like, maybe it was just pure fear that made him not want to go to the ground there. And, you know, I'll tell you what, if nothing else, Walter Vitale is going to go back to Vegas knowing, remembering who Brian Beebe <laughs> Brian Beebe, He's like, the guy who gave me that big knot on my yeah, head. Yeah, I was gonna say he might even oh. have a little, uh, a little war wound to, to prove it. So, Beebe's doing a really good job, Johnny. Really surprising me, and I expected to see Brian Beebe come out here and put in a good show. But it seems to me like in the early goings there, he is not one bit intimidated by Walter Vitale, and he's trying to take the fight to him. Not one bit at all, Mike. And it, it, it looks like Brian Beebe knows his strength. I mean, maybe that's one of the things that he went back and worked on, because we saw him get ragdolled by the Barlows, and I think right then he said, you know, I got to go back, maybe get some, maybe hit the gym, uh, get a little, because he looks powerful right uh, now. He looks Johnny, physical. Yeah, anybody's gonna get ragdolled by the Barlows. Those guys are. 
strong as an yeah. ox, but but you're right. He he does look stronger than Walter Vitale, and, and those that have grappled Walter say he's got phenomenal strength. But he's got that kind of strange strength that when he gets a hold of you, you can't get you can't get away from it. Looks like Walter's got a bit of a cut of over his his uh, right eye there. It doesn't look like a whole lot of blood's coming out of it, well, though. So not a, it, you know, not in danger and there. It, and it doesn't even surprise me that he doesn't because Brian Beebe's looking for the shots. He wants to end this thing without a submission. He's looking for the big knees, the the elbows, the the right left hooks. I mean, he's he's looking good, Mike. He looks good. Well, a, a very uh, alert fighter senses bloody smell blood. When you see a cut like that, you got to be looking to put that point of your elbow right there where that uh, blood's cut or that cut is. Uh, uh oh, <laughs> you, but you cannot you stay cannot in his guard. That. You cannot yeah, no. sit there with Walter Vitale. He's just too good. He's a very accomplished submission wrestler. He's, he's won several major submission tournaments. And Johnny, I think Brian Beebe may have come out with a good showing, but he's about to take a nap, I think. Yeah, well, right now, you know, he's only got 45 seconds left, and Walter's holding that tight. And there's the tap. Man, oh, man. was on, buddy. He wasn't getting out of that. That was on. It's super tight. Well, right there. You see Walter. You see Walter immediately. Want to okay. see if he's okay. And I think Brian's okay. He's just like, oh, he's probably more disgusted that, yeah. man, I was winning. He knows. He's very disappointed. He he probably sat there and said, I, what was I? Right when he made the mistake of giving him that triangle choke, he knew. It, it, it's, this is it, man. What I, a I made great a guy this Walter Vitale is. Though. Look kid, at him. Guy. Nobody cares more about Brian Beebe right now than Walter, than Walter. Vitale does. Really a good, good guy. And look, you see the crowd there. They came all the way up from Las oh. Vegas to cheer for him. They love this guy. Oh, they brought the crowd, Mike. They brought half the Delta Center, it seemed like. I mean, these guys are coming from all over. How many how many Las Vegas shirts and, and how many cheers did these guys get? But, but it just goes to show they're, they're really a class act. Mika's gym represents themselves very well. They really do. You see here in your crush combat cam where, boy, right in the early goings there, Brian Beebe really oh. gave it to Walter. Right there, you can see where the cut came from, that that big knee across the forehead. And then Man. that uppercut was devastating. But did you see Walter Vital take one step backwards? No. no. He took those no. shots no. and kept coming right at you. Well, he's the Wolverine Mike, and right here you see that's that was Brian Beebe's biggest mistake, and I think right there he knew it. He was uh, probably upset with his performance. He knew he was going to get tapped, and it just was a matter of time. It certainly was. Because you can't stay in the guard of a submission wrestler of that caliber. <laughs> yeah, you finally see a smile out of Walter Vital. He feels good about that when he knows it. He may have dodged the bullet tonight because he really ran into a buzzsaw early on. And Walter once again is going to go back to Las Vegas with the championship. This post-fight interview is sponsored by The Keyhole with their new location at 3460 South Redwood Road. I am BB, man. You get in here. I seriously, on your feet, you are lighting him up. You look like a whole new fighter stepping in here, man. Uh, thanks a lot, Johnny. I knew what he was going to do. He knew what I was going to do. I mean, it was a classic fight. Uh, he, he, my hat's off to him. He did what he had to do. He finished me. Well, Team Mika and Walter Vitale, they're no joke. That's a tough kid. He's came through and really swept through the competition when he comes here. But on your feet, man, you look slick, Brian. Man, I, I, thought, I thought you did a great job. Thank you. I need to get better on the ground. Hey, you're good on the ground. I think he just might be maybe just a little better, but that's okay because, Brian, I, I can't wait to see you come back and fight again. Will you promise us that you'll do that? Absolutely, man. I want to issue a challenge to all the fighters in the Ogden area. You know, a lot of gyms talk smack, but I don't see him getting in the cage here. Give Mike a call. Let's get your fighters in the cage and see who's the best in Northern Utah. There you go, Brian Beebe, man. Thanks so much for that plug. Tonight you were good, but just not good enough. I can't wait to see you dominate in Utah once again. Thanks, Johnny. This post-fight interview brought to you by the good folks at Quality Inn Hotel. Located on Redwood Road in North Temple. Walter, once again, you came, you saw, you kicked some ass. É, vim aqui para fazer isso mesmo. I come to do the job. I come to fight. <laughs> he always comes to fight. This guy is a machine right here. If you don't know who this guy is, get to know who he is because this guy right here, I'm proud just to have him in this show. Eu agradeço só ele. Eu agradeço a todo mundo de Utah. É um prazer para mim lutar aqui. I think the guy that fought me, I think Utah is a pleasure to be here. Walter, thanks for coming, man. You're a true champion. Congratulations, great job. I don't know what he said, but it sounded pretty tough. <laughs> That's a tough guy right there, Mike. You're absolutely right. Vegas, uh-oh, they're on a roll right now, they're Mike. They're on, on a roll. Maybe some of the Utah boys were overlooking these guys. And they're back here. They're doing their thing. Walter, honestly, it's a privilege to have him in the show, guys. He's a tough kid, and Mika, you know, they're bringing him every single time. And they'll continue to bring him as long as we're having him. And they know well, they will come here got, anytime. We got more of this stuff, Johnny Ritchie. It's just getting better. Sorry. Stick around. I'm here with Blas Savina, and first of all, Blas, I hate interviewing guys that are this much better looking than me, but this guy is one bad dude. The last time he came up to our show, 
just dominated, man. Where does it come from? Um, well, it comes from hard training and dedication and having a huge heart, man. And in our school, that's something we, we developed. It seemed like you had great stand-up and great ground. What is your what is your forte? What do you like more? Well, actually, I've been um, studying more stand-up than I have on the ground. So I plan on implementing some of that today. But if I take it to the ground, I know what to do, you know? Well, Bliss or Blast, whatever it is, Avena. Um, you know, both times you've been out here, you know, you're a great grappler right here. You know, you submitted both guys. I'm a, you know, great grappler myself, but I go in the ring, I go in there to fight. This is MMA, it's mixed martial arts. You know, it's full contact fighting. So how about you come in here this time and, you know, throw some punches, grapple. Um, just, you know, be a lot more physical than just trying to submit and get it out of there. Well, you know, you, know, you can try to submit me, but, you know, good luck. So I'm going to bang the crap out of you. and. I'm going to put you out real nice and teach you a lesson how the real pros get down. Your main event, Brandon Melendez, the murderer is coming out here. Murder. Give it up for Brandon Melendez. And how many of you guys traveled all the way from Las Vegas to see Blaza Vida represent yeah, Nevada? You're going to see two of the baddest guys yeah. you've ever seen step into this cage, get in here and mix it up right now in a welterweight Man. matchup. Blaza Vida. Main event. Man. Brandon Melendez, I'm just so excited, I'm speechless almost. Let's check it out, here we go, it's your main event. We know you've been fighting in other shows, you've been representing, doing your thing. Tell the people at home, what does it mean to be representing Team Utah in tomorrow's competition? It's great, I've always been representing Utah the whole time, so it's great, holding down. Great, holding it down. And Brandon, tell the people at home, what, what, what are you going to do to ensure your success tomorrow? What's going to make you walk away with the victory? Um, I'm a vet, this is what I do. Experience, skill, everything all around. Everything all around, Mr. Disciple, Mr. Avina, representing uh, Team Mika and Las Vegas. Why are you, well, what does it mean to you to be representing Team Mika and, and the state of Nevada? It means everything to me because I have all the support that I need in order to get around from town to town. And now that I'm here, I'm just ready to put on a good fight. And I know Brandon Melendez has some experience on me. But that ain't going to stop me from getting in the cage. I think it's time of getting in the cage. Tell us what's going to ensure your success. Why are you going to walk away the victor in tomorrow's competition? Well, just based on my dedicated training, I'm more than willing to put up with the fight against Brandon Melendez. So either way it goes, no predictions, but we're going to have a, a hell of a fight. Going to have a hell of a fight, and I guarantee that's going to happen. These guys are mixing it up. I fought in many caves, so the cage is my house. My house. He says the cage is his house. Blaz, what do you think of that? Is the cage his house? Well, let me go ahead and clean my feet before I get inside, but I'm going to get in there. He's going to get in there right there. Shake hands. Best of luck to both these guys. It's going to be one hell of a main event tomorrow. Johnny Richie, wow. I like the hell out of that Blas Blas Avina. Avina. Wow. <laughs> How way wow. is it that Brandon Melendez always gets one upped in, a, in his interview? <laughs> he gets one upped. You know, I don't know what it is, but you know, right there, you heard him say it was his house and Blas and well, I'm at my feet, but I'm, I'm coming in. I'm my feet on the way in, man, but I'm going to take over. Blas Avina is 5'11, 170 pounds, once again with the Team Mika group, calls himself the Disciple. And uh, Johnny, this kid, uh, he, he's, we say this a lot, but he's physical. Wow. He's a is good he looking kid. Is Ever. And he's got it all. Stand up ground, he's got it all. Mike, absolutely. He's undefeated. He's undefeated in the UCE tournament. He's never been beat. He's came in here and he's dominated a few times. But I think if there's anyone that could give him the shot, Mike, that could be Blazavina. It just might be the murderer in Brandon Melendez. Absolutely. Brandon's 5'10", 170 pounds. And, and Blazavina is actually the nexus for bringing uh, Brandon Melendez back into the, the Ultimate Combat sure. experience. So I remember when Blazavina destroyed his first opponent up here, Brandon Melendez. Melendez was in the audience and he came I want to fight that guy. I want to fight that guy. We can't let those guys beat up Utah guys like this. And he's taking it very personally. This is a this is my home turf and kind of thing. And and he's coming in with a lot of pride trying to defend the home the home town. Well I tell you what, Mike, and that makes for an exciting fight. Just in itself, you feel the air, you feel you feel the vibe. Ooh, big <laughs> slam by Brandon Melendez. Big slam. That's what he's known for. Brandon's a very physical fighter. Now he's gotten this Blasavina woken oh. up and <laughs> Blas is coming right back. Looks like two bobcats going at it. 
Brandon man, Giant. getting in here and mixing it up, doing what they do. Brandon Melendez gets a big takedown. Boz didn't stay there, though, Mike, very long. He just hopped right back up and said, hey, I'm going to look for maybe a choke, or I'm going to try to take you to the mat. You know, Brandon's a, a, an exciting fighter to watch. He's always moving. He's always got action going on here. And boy, look at that. Brandon Melendez is a guy that we know to be a strong Powerful. kid. Oh, look at that. He re was repaid Whoa. a favor with a very strong body lock and a slam right there. Well, wow. Wow. And he didn't hop up as fast as Blasavina did, Mike. I don't know if it's just positioning or what, but uh, but you know Brandon Melendez is going to work and work and work until he gets this kid in his guard because Brandon is a ground and pound fighter, Mike. He's he's okay at submissions. He, they're okay. But if this kid gets on top of you, good night, and he's going to end the fight. Yeah, but Johnny, this Blasavina is slick, and he's not letting Brandon hang out underneath. He's making him pay, punish him with some shoulders there, <laughs> and, and it looked like he could have had full mount and, just, and didn't really want to take it. I think he's comfortable from this position right here. Well, I think Mika was saying a little something before, Mike. Well, they're working into positions that we might not have seen, and maybe this is one of them. Maybe they, they're really taking their offense to the next level by training and, and oh, fighting out of that position. Right, right, there, right there, he went for that full mount position, and, and uh, Brandon Melendez oh. elevated his hips and got yeah. a big reversal. Now, almost left something behind there, though, John. He almost did right there, but Brandon Melendez pulls it out, and, and, and this is where he dominates, Mike. Up against the cage, in your guard, or full mount. He's going to land the big shots, and those might not hurt right now, but tomorrow, Blas's ribs are uh, going to be a little sore. If this is a third round fight, a three round fight, he'll feel him then too. Those body shots will really start to take their toll in rounds to come. Typically, you know, unless you really land it on a, the sweet spot, as they call it, uh, you're not going to feel it immediately. But they can really drain you as you start to draw into those reserves in the round in the later rounds. Wow, Mike, this is a back and forth. This is an exciting fight. The people are really uh, amped up and pumped up to see, uh, you know, Vegas versus Utah. And this is it. This caps off the night. This is the main event. This is for all the marbles, I think, Mike. Well, look at the Athletic Commission marshal there checking things out. He's intense. Everybody's, yeah, everybody's intense. This intense. thing is really <laughs> high intensities. And oh, this oh, is what Brandon oh. Melendez does so well. That's where he's right there. Pinch against the cage. He'll drop fists. He'll drop elbows, shoulders, whatever he has to do to make sure that you're going to get cut or you're going to get knocked out. Johnny, you know, when Blasavina got that big takedown and the slam uh, to answer Brandon's, I really thought Brandon oh. might have been in a little bit of trouble. He's done a great job of coming back Absolutely. in this first round. And if nothing changes, I got to give him this first round. Me too, Mike. You know, that it was topsy-turvy in the first 45 seconds, but I think Brandon in the past minute and a half to two minutes has controlled this thing and, and, and pushed balls against the fence and doing all the right things and, and, and putting on a show. Wow. Punching, not just camping out and sitting They're there. They're definitely doing that. The disciple and the murderer mixing it up here and the first round is going to come to a close here, Johnny Ritchie, but it was an exciting round and once again, i got to give that first round to, to Brandon Melendez. Brandon Melendez, I think you're absolutely right, Mike, but Blas, that ain't going to set very well with because you know Mika's going to be in his ear, let him know about it, but you saw right there at the end of the fight, Brandon Melendez helps him up. It's all about sportsmanship. It's all for the love of the game. Absolutely. You see in your crush combat cam, really some good action early on. Brandon Melendez got a big slam to start things off with, but Blasavina came back with a slam of his own. And uh, right here, oh, that was a very a powerful body lock and a slam. Get it right up. You know Brandon Melendez felt that one. Yeah. And then, you boy, just as he went for full mount position, Melendez got a big reversal and really controlled the action. Really controlled that. the action there. Got inside of his guard, pushed him against the fence, and just wailed away on him, Mike. And Blasavina, you could tell. <laughs> That's not sitting very well. He's upset. He wants to come back out and show Brandon. You can't do that to me, pal. You know what, though, Johnny? I think Blas is a very mature fighter for as many fights as he's had. He's, he's, he hasn't had a whole lot of fights. But oh, you can tell he's fought oh. a lot. Don't leave your leg out like that with Brandon Ooh. Melendez. He'll make you pay, and he did just that. And this is what people came to see, Mike. These two warriors, oh, absolute baby. sluggers. Get in here and just do what they do best and just <laughs> slug each other, knock each other around. Wow, Johnny, Whoa. this is a great And another event. shot by oh. Brandon Melendez. Brandon Melendez left his head behind oh, no. right there, and this is where Blasavini has defeated. Oh, oh my no goodness. No way. <laughs> he just submitted Brandon Melendez. That's how he wins oh, his fights. Oh, my gosh. Mike, that thing must have been on tight for Melendez to tap. It must have Johnny, been on tight. I'm shocked. I'm shocked at that. Melendez oh, was really controlling gosh. this fight. Had a great exchange to start this round. And wow, left his head. Huge. Of, you can't make little mistakes against this caliber opponent. Huge, huge victory for Blasavina. Wow, you and better Team believe Mika it. To come is. in here and fight uh, just a, a, a fighter like Brandon Melendez and walk away the victor. These two are slugging it out, mixing it up. Brandon ducks his head, and Blas takes advantage of that. Johnny, grabs it in, gets there, a choke. Wow. Crush combat camp. The action was fast and furious, and then it just kind of died. It was strange how, you know, Brandon left his head behind. Wow. He knows better than that. But Blasavina said, I'm going to come Jeez. to Utah. I want to fight the best guys you got. That's we've it. given him the best we've got, and he's destroyed him. Congratulations, Team Mika. These guys are going home with some hardware. Nice job.
This post-fight interview brought to you by Global Marketing Alliance. They need motivated sales associates looking to make a six-figure income. Call 486-4221. Absolutely, Brandon. You know, it's so good to see you back here in the UCE fighting inside the cage. You go up against Blazavina at one bad dude. And you're one bad guy yourself, Brandon. What can we expect out of you, man? It's tough to have tougher guys in this show. That's what it is. <laughs> it is. And you guys are two tough guys. I'd like to see a rematch on that one, Brandon. What do you think about that, man? What do you think? He wants it. He wants to fight again. If not, I understand, you know. Well, is there anyone you want to thank for being in the main event tonight? Is there anybody you want to thank and, and, and appreciate? I want to thank G um, GMA, Global Marketing Alliance, for, saw, for taking care of me. I want to thank Alan Bott right here with High Ridge Construction. Takes care of me. And then I want to thank Vitality Nutrition, Highway 89 across the street from Shopco and Bountiful. I want to thank Excel Gym with Ryan Jensen for making me able to do that. For making me able to do this full time. Thanks, guys. Well, Brandon, I know what, man. I, I'm, I'm just proud to see you back in there doing your damn thing. I hope you don't leave us. Stick around a little longer, get a couple more wins on your belt, and then get a rematch with Blazavina. Whatever, whatever it takes to step back up, you know? All right, Brandon, tonight you were good, but just not good enough. Thanks for being here, man. Thanks, Johnny. This post fight interview brought to you by Got Your Back Realty. Give Gary McDonald a call at 809 Gary or check him out online at www.igotyourbackrealty.com. Blasavina, in my opinion, that was a big win for you. How does it feel? Well, yeah, he was tougher than I would have, than I thought he was putting it to me. But man, that was a big fight for me, and I truly appreciate the fact that he he accepted the challenge to fight me. And you know, and him alone, that's a big stepping stone for me. With a guy that has three ex experienced fights, and you know, the the guillotine is something that I rely on, and I was in trouble, so I had to drop the guillotine. You gotta take what you gotta take, man. No shame in that. You did your thing tonight, and and I, as I said, that was a big win for you because Brandon does have a lot of experience. When Mika first talked to us, he wanted us to put up our very best against you, and tonight we did that, and you beat him. And I appreciate that, and especially I'd like to give a shout out to my family and everybody from the team that made it from Las Vegas over here. I'm truly, I'm truly grateful. And to Las Vegas, Barney Pops Bar and Grill, that helps me out. Hey, man, it's got to feel good having all that love over there. People came here. They they had that win just with you. I mean, they felt it as much as you did. It's got to be feel nice for you. Yes, it definitely does. And I thank Utah a lot for having me back. We'll have you back anytime, brother. Congratulations. Great job. Thank you very much. Johnny Ritchie, round 16 was a great round of fights. All the way through, Mike, from top to bottom, from the start of the round at the Sandy Station, coming all the way to the Delta Center, proving once again the UCE is the best full contact mixed martial arts show on the planet. Without a doubt, and you saw right there in your main event just how good these fighters are getting. But Johnny Ritchie, let's talk a little bit about December 10th at the Delta Center. Wow, well, Mike, it's a round of champions bringing in the toughest, the best of the best, the best we've ever had. Guys that already have championship cups are coming in to fight for the championship. Belt. It's the thing that everyone wants to get, everyone wants to own, and these guys are fighting to do just that. Basically, you just saw the best of round 16. Well, we're bringing back all the best of the best for the best of the best of the best of the ultimate combat experience. You definitely don't want to miss it. Ticketmasters, where you can get your tickets, and you definitely want to get them fast because they're going no, fast. No. Johnny Ritchie, I know I'll see you there. Hey, see You'll you see there. me there December 10th at the Delta Center. We'll see you next week on the Ultimate Combat Experience.